Hello everybody and welcome to the Daily Combat Podcast. This is Hollywood Mac Connolly with the Double Biceps. It is a legal requirement every single time we appear on camera. My co-host, co-wearer of clothes, co-breather of air in this very room, the winner of the Dave Stockbridge of the Year Award. It is, in fact, Dave Stockbridge. Thank you. Welcome Thank you for to the that show. We have some introduction. two very special guests here today. We have a mixed martial arts fighter of a, a recent victory, a fantastic job done at the Diamondback Fighting Championships. It is Joe, the Vanilla Gorilla Brown. Mm. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the show. Returning to a returning guest. And uh, we also have Byron Galavanov, who yes. is a Sumbo coach. Coach and mm. also worked with Joe uh, for his preparation when he competed uh, overseas in the Sambo world. So welcome to the show to you as well. Thank you. Great right. work. And uh, so, uh, so we're very privileged to have two very fine young men of the fighting world here t- uh, today. And uh, you guys have got a bit of a, a shared history, as Matt just uh, alluded to. Um, how is it that your attention became turned to Sambo? over recent times yeah so um we had a <clears throat> during a fight camp um towards the start of the year uh over the weekend we had um sava who is the he sort of runs the show in sambo in australia mm-hmm. so he came into our gym and ran a like a three-day camp of for Sambo, yeah. Um, Were you allowed to leave, or it was three days straight? <laughs> like he was, I was allowed to go, but I had to come back, <laughs> and that was the hardest part. He was standing at the door, like you're not <laughs> going. You have to beat me to be able to get yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, so it was right as we we're sort of ramping up the training, so all the fighters had to had to go in. Um, yeah, it was cool to. There was like actually quite a lot that because um, it's mainly with the jacket on, um, so you think it's really different. But there's a lot that he showed us that I could use in. In um, MMA, mm. and, yeah. And have you used anything in your fight since that you think, hmm, I'm glad I did that three days where I couldn't leave the gym? <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in the fights. In training, I've tried a few things. And yeah. then people go, yeah, yeah. You put few, ja- few jackets on people. Things. A few little no. sneaky <laughs> Sambo tactics. Yeah, yeah. Head butts and... And, and, and how, did, how did you come to Sambo? It, 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 were you brought up in the sport or is it something you discovered later on? I was initially in judo. Okay. Um, I started off when I was really young in kendo. Yeah. Branched off to judo and then tend not to like the rules. The changes, <laughs> no leg grabs, this and that. Yeah. Um, initially, I was just going to dabble in Sambo just because mum's Ukrainian and I wanted to hang around other Eastern Europeans. Yeah. And um, yeah, ended up just loving it more than anything else and, and sticking with it. Yeah. So how long how long has it been for you now? You, I I stopped counting. To really? The point where like not not that it's been like years and years and years. Yeah. But like I started judo and then a couple other couple years later. Yeah. Just hopped to samba. So at least like, like four ish five ish. So you, so yeah. you were drawn to so some of the cultural tra- uh, traditions of the sport. Yeah. Yeah. It was just um you know you're involved in Japanese sports and there's part of you that's like oh, I don't really connect with too much of the traditional part of this and then you yeah. get a a room full of Russians and Ukrainians and yeah. other people from Eastern Europe and you just go, oh, this is just like hanging around family and friends. Yeah, yeah. So um, because of that. And you're not always barring all the time. It's not always that, like, I'll line up and respect the older thing. It's just like, yeah. I'll come and shake the hand, yep. say hi. And get, get thrown. Into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Across the room. <laughs> just much nicer. Yeah. That sort of environment. They'll but gently yeah. throw you down. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, that's the greeting. Yeah. If it's your mum, right. it's gentle. It's otherwise, gentle. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is one big difference with, um, with someone to judo. Like, judo, they'll do the, do the throw. It's usually quite gentle. Whenever Sava grabs you, you're getting ready for a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, everyone backs away. He's like, okay, who, who for technique and everyone, <laughs> everyone steps back <laughs> yeah. and if you ask him to do it again you're getting thrown he's like all right i'll, I'll show you again as long as you're willing to to take the brunt of it wow. yeah so people stop asking questions <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you didn't get it the first time yeah. you're gonna get it really hard the second time yeah. and, and for those people that might not understand much about sambo or its origins uh, can you kind of step us through uh, the, the story of sambo um so sambo is you know on paper it's sort of like a, a military Martial art, so mm-hmm. combat sambo was initially just for soldiers and the military. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually the Russian, it opened up. Yes, Russian old, military. Old Soviet. Well, Soviet military. Yeah, yeah. right. So. Then it opened up to the public, you know, after the Soviet Union, people wanted to turn into some more of a global sport. But mm-hmm. the civilians had um, options to compete in sports sambo, mm-hmm. which was basically a mixture of, like, you know, wrestling and judo techniques. Yeah. Um, so they used, like, a very similar thing, like sort of gi. 
Yeah. And they suppose that the extra shoulder grips are designed off of a military uniform. Ah, so right. that's why you've got those as well. Yeah. And they've also done the ingenious thing of just adding two holes so the be- belt doesn't go um, slipping everywhere. Oh, right. Oh, okay. and it's taken the Japanese like yeah. hundreds of years to even think about that. <laughs> They're still refusing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, and you've obviously got the uh, sexy Soviet shorts on as well, yep. um, which is a big difference. I don't, yeah, judo pantaloons a bit, <laughs> a bit much sometimes. I prefer the shorts. But, yeah, the guy who actually taught the judo techniques uh, of Sambo, he actually got killed during the Great Purge. Like, oh, you're a Japanese oh. spy. Got rid of him. Wow. Uh, we'll keep you froze, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but off you go. Um, wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. It's quite a history behind it but you'll see a lot of wrestling technique as well because the scoring and yeah. the mats are all modeled off of that and then yeah so so where is the you know the, the whole soviet system kind of fell away somewhat it seems that people have a real reverence for the martial art that was born out yeah. of that era yeah there's um you know it's a it's a really tricky era for people to talk about um, yeah. especially in a modern context a lot of people are either 100 percent like, oh, really nostalgic for it, or they're just like, that was an awful time, that's why we left. Yeah. Um, but sort of remnants like this, I find are actually one of those you know, positive things. I don't really think Soviet when I think of this. I think of saying that kind of unites a lot of Eastern European people, Yeah. that sort of love of combat sports, and this is the combat sport that was born of it. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's sort of not really on paper officially, but it's sort of said that a lot of sambo techniques are taken not just from you know, judo wrestling, but a lot of folk styles uh-huh. uh, from all the Soviet, you know, sort of states and all that, and the yeah. countries that joined the union. Yeah. So you'll find, you know, all sorts of folk wrestling styles in there, um, which is a nice little story to think about, and I like yeah. to think of that as well, you know. Yeah, it's great. It's great when you've got a sport and there's these little cultural remnants that kind yeah. of filter through, and people don't necessarily know why they might be abiding by a particular technique, but they know, you know, it is a technique. But there's a there's a history and a story behind each and every one of them. There's more of an attitude as well that's a bit contrary to judo that if you make the throw work, then that's fine. Mm. Um, coaches will usually step back and go, "Yeah, you threw them, and it looked it looked good, and yep. that's fine." It's not, "Oh, you didn't step in." one centimetre from, you know, the left foot or something like that. Yeah. Uh, they go, yeah, different body types, you, you make it work. And, so, so it's yeah. not quite as exacting when it comes yes. to the technical and there's more, um, I, I guess, more uh, flexibility afforded to the, to the individual athletes. Yeah, so you, you'll see people a lot more sort of individualistic in, in their approach to actually fighting and, um, yeah, going about throws. And, and was it... The UFC that brought Sambo to prominence uh, in the Western world, yep. also, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to say Khabib did a lot of our, <laughs> PR yeah. for us, yeah, yeah. Um, and Fias, the uh, international body, has gone. Oh my god, opportunity, and they're trying to jump on it now. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Fedor Emelian Ayanko as well. Yeah. Um, he was you know, a big part of that, but then he kind of didn't get into the UFC, and then it kind of drifted off, and people forgot about it. Yeah. He's sort of come back as well, and yeah. yeah. And, and what's the community like here in Australia now? Um, at least in Adelaide, it's uh, it's quite tightly knit. You're sort of just going there and you know everybody. Yep. Um, in the other states, it's a bit more like, you know, what you'd expect from judo, several different clubs. Yep. Um, but the and is it necessarily people from that Eastern European or ex-Soviet background? Or uh, there's is, a, is lot, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of new people now flipping into sport? You'll see people from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, um, one of the coaches in Sydney um, mm-hmm. that's recently done the qualification, yeah, he's from Uzbekistan and he was like a bronze medalist for adults and a, maybe even juniors gold. Um, he's got a very good competition history, but um, yeah, he's immigrated from Uzbekistan. And there's a lot of Russian co- coaches and Eastern European coaches that haven't wanted to get qualified that are floating around. Mm. And I've met them and it's really odd that they just don't want to get involved in it. Hmm. Um, I think they don't like the idea of having to get qualified when the old idea was if you're a good s- soundbist, you just you can run classes and people can tell that was enough. Um, yeah. So I think people are very reluctant to you know to integrate into the new system that they're trying to put through. And and other there's sambo competitions in Australia and um, is nationals is happening as we speak. As we speak. As we speak. But Fantastic. it's a very small <laughs> event this year. We're getting warmed up just trying to meet each other. Yeah. Um, there's been... A throw each other around. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Meet there, new people, throw them. Yeah, yeah. There's a <laughs> Samba Federation Have some before. vodka. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that's one one thing is that, yeah, you've got a lot of the uh, 
the Russian guys coming over <laughs> and it gives that sort of mood to the room, well, I, which I find really pleasant. But I yeah. think some people walk in there going, eh, I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> I don't understand half the words. Um, Salva gives up speaking uh, English. Sometimes we just start going on, a, on something in Russian. <laughs> you encounter this and you're having to like translate, but then even then you're just kind of like, Nah. Well, I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch and don't ask him to do it again. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You don't want to get concussed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, we're getting warmed up. We'll have a beach sandball competition uh, early next year in Adelaide. Oh. Um, and actually, I'm meant to plug that. If you're okay. a judo plug guy, away. wrestling guy, it doesn't matter. We'll chuck a gi on you. Yeah. Um, or a coat on you and. You know, just join join us. Very casual event, not like a real proper thing. Yeah. Um, but we just want people to get out there, have some fun. And, and it, enjoy it. And it, how how has the sport been getting itself out there? I know you guys featured at Apex uh, Sport Fest last year, so that, that was a, there was a demonstration uh, in the ring um, on that day. weren't able to compete from memory. There was some no, kind of no. yeah, there was some kind of provision there where you weren't able to compete on the day, but you were able to get up there and and uh, do a demonstration. So how is it that you guys are getting the word out about the sport and encouraging new members? Um, at the moment, we're just trying to filter through judo clubs. Yep. Um, trying to show them that our technique is effective. Yep. Um, so there's a few of You can say superior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, we get in a lot of trouble because we don't get um, penalised for negative... It's called negative gripping. Okay. So if you get a really strong grip on someone, but it's unconventional, you get penalised in judo. So uh-huh. I can grab someone around the belt and on the same side and uh, I'll get a penalty in judo. When some, well, you can hold that as long as you you want yeah um so a lot of the summer guys they'll grab and they'll forget about it and then they're getting penalized and then they then they lose control yeah <laughs> yeah go nuts wow. um but yeah we're trying to go through that avenue um i think some of our guys will eventually go into mma i think that's where a lot of the marketing needs to be done yeah that's what people are watching they're not turning on the judo or anything like that they're looking at ufc they're looking at dfc it's really strange now that it, it used to be that um uh, say karate or sambo or, or the, the 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 various disciplines were the gateway into mma but now increasingly it's mma that's now the gateway to these more niche martial arts yeah. so people are getting involved for the sport of it and then falling in love with the martial arts side yeah. of it um and um and finding a discipline that kind of works really well for them uh, joe uh, uh, you came to the sport more from that this from the mma side of things is that right yeah i started training in Muay Thai, but I try and I s- only trained that from watching UFC. Ah. I was, there wasn't that many MMA gyms. Well, there was none near me. Yeah. So I found a Muay Thai gym and I liked Anderson Silva. So, so yeah, I was like, I'll try Muay Thai then. Yeah. Yeah. But I think um, it might be that way, like um, MMA is sort of the way to show Sambo and all the other um, – sports because of all the superstars that come through like ufc and mma yeah um and then like the way that they market all their fighters it just um even casuals that never watch ufc know who some of these big names are now Mm. so yeah it'll i think just comes down to the way that they're promoted yeah Yeah. and and you were saying you started off with muay thai but you you were really just looking at a a way to get in and muay thai was that kind of that stepping stone and you found yourself into at an mma gym pretty quickly thereafter um no i took a break i so i trained muay thai for like three years on and off okay so that's pretty extensive introduction Yeah, yeah and then i but then i took a few years um away from any of that training and just weightlifting yeah. Um, so you started Muay Thai pretty young because you were yeah, was, weight training? I was 14. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. I was 14, I started. Do you, do you reckon doing that really early on kind of got those neuro pathways going so when you did return to the sport and then it all of a sudden had the muscle mass, it seemed to work flow really nicely for you? Yeah, absolutely. It's like it meant like when I go hard into MMA, I got to skip because you're learning so much all at once. I got to skip a little bit, like a little bit came back to me. Yeah. Bit faster and that helps yeah Yeah, because you do see a lot of um bigger guys in particular because you're you're quite a large muscular mma fighter Mm -hmm. and but a lot of larger guys seem to be almost awkward and and uncomfortable and find it hard to get around their own bodies whereas uh in in the cage you don't seem to be impaired in that same way you seem to have a fluidity and movement that perhaps um could be born out of those early days of uh, muay thai yeah early days and also i'm sort of a little bit 
talented, particularly <laughs> gorilla, gorilla, <laughs> gorilla, yeah. but particularly <laughs> lately. I'm sort of um, finding myself more and more interested in just movement and the way the body moves. Yeah. And um, it's funny, like you watch like a five year old that mm. moves that's never been stuck sitting at a desk that's never had a laborious job yet you know yeah. and the way that they move their body and play around on the playground and stuff they're just like so much more in tune with their body then i think you lose that if you don't if you're not um thinking about it yeah so yeah that's something that i've learned recently that um I'm getting quite interested in, yeah. Mm, it's almost like the, you know, uh, portal, yeah, portal exactly. um, yeah. kind of freedom of movement yeah, and, and, and and that type of thing. It's funny, isn't it? You kind of got to re, uh, <laughs> reverse engineer it yeah. and be really conscious about what yeah. kids are completely unconscious about. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and so you, you've just started down that journey of, of, mm. of and, and – what, what, how has that changed uh, your your training? <coughs> as a, have you had adapted any of that into uh, what it is that you're doing um, day to day? I is haven't, that, or is it more I haven't tried to, but I've find I've sort of been finding it like um, a good supplement. Like it's added to the way that I move and the way that I dance around the ring. Yeah, yeah. I'm not consciously like this sort of exercises that I've been doing aren't consciously to make MMA better. Yeah. But I think it all goes hand in hand. Mm. Yeah. 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 I do see that in- interesting where people really do start focusing on movement and adding that to their game. Yeah. Guys like Dominic Cruz or something who uh, sets up their entire game based around their footwork and their entries and exits and, you know, keeping themselves safe on in every mm. potential position uh, and showing the opponent, you know, 10 different entry points and yeah. confusing the, the hell out of them. Um, and just constantly moving feet, and it is such an important element to the game that a lot of people really don't pick up on. Or they, you know, if the casual viewer is watching, and it's just like, just, just hit him, just go <laughs> after him. It's like you need yeah. to set it up. Like you, you're setting it up with your positioning first before you can do anything, before you can strike, before you can take down, before you can do any of these moves that's going to uh, attack your opponent. If you don't set it up properly, you know, you're swinging at air, and the opponent's going to just dance around you and. You're invulnerable in that position, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was absolutely. that was huge on that point. That was huge in my last fight a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> the fella that I was fighting was um, he was moving so much mm. that I think no, oh, it's taken me a few fights to even start to understand it. But if you're standing like in front of somebody and you want to hit them, you have like there's like a quarter second of when you start to throw and when you land mm. and in between them, they could throw any, if you're just standing right in front of someone in the middle of the cage and they throw something at the same time, um, well then they, you'll probably miss and they'll hit you or something like that. Yeah. Whereas if you guide them into it and you spend a bit more time sort of, um, this was a little bit tricky cause this guy was sort of bouncing all over the, all over the joint. Yeah. But you were here. Like I, I was hearing all my teammates scream out combos that they're trying to get me to land. They're like, "Just throw a head kick, throw a head kick." I'm like it's yeah, yeah. I'm like yeah, I'm like let me. You won't stop moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. Like you can't just. It's there. You can't just throw it. Sometimes you can, but um, I've been finding that I've been finding a lot of success in just guiding people into things and setting them up so they want to go a certain way and land in things and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's worked to a high percentage so far, so and it's landed me a few good shots. So, and Byron, have you, have you ever thought about stepping into the cage? Or yeah, th- absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I need to do a bit more combat sambo. I think. Yeah. Um, my striking is awful. All oh, right. Like, okay. Even though I did some Muay Thai and stuff when I was very little. Yeah. Um, like I've just got a wrestling body, so I yep. stuck to what I knew. Yeah. And just went. No, nah, it's not for me. Um, so, yeah, I need to get that back up. But you've got that um, desire to to yeah. step into the cage absolutely. at some stage. Yeah. 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 Um, just, yeah, a few combat summer matches and then I think... Well, I'll be moving up near your gym soon. All right. So, hey, um, look okay. out. Yeah, I'll be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not... <laughs> <laughs> taking, I'm Maybe taking over. up a weight division <laughs> yeah, as well. Right. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of joining um, Cardioflex as well and yeah. hopefully stepping in the cage at some point. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, because I'm down south at the moment, but I'll be pretty close there. And Brilliant. I think that'll be a good time to make the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the moment, mainly sambo. You made that point about people saying stuff while you're in the cage. It's just not going to work. My favorite one with the geese is break the grip. 
you've got some gorilla <laughs> with like <laughs> hands that are just locked in a position. Uh. And you're like, it's not working. What do you want me to do? <laughs> just, just so I know, what's break the grip in Russian? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. No. I'm just what it is. Yeah, I'm just imagining. <laughs> sure. yeah. Call out Salva actually here because when we're at uh, in Lebanon, I, I would know this if he was in the corner, but he's like, uh, I don't know what to say in English, and then he just kind of walks away. And he was supposed to be cornering me, and, and I just see Joe's. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to go in. The ref's like. Where's where's your buddy? Where's your car? <laughs> like, I guess I'm I'm doing this on my own. <laughs> so, this was not going to happen. Yeah. Wow, so weird. So, so you were also in Lebanon just uh, yes, just recently, yeah. for, uh, and uh, and how was that experience? Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, for those people at home representing Australia yep. in sambo, it was an international meet. Um, what, Asian what was, Asian uh, sambo championship. Asian, yeah. right? Okay, and so uh, who who's competing in that federation? Uh, all of Central Asia, so you've got... So all the all tough the, guys, yeah. in other words. Yes, yeah, right, yeah, okay. They mean mugging us yeah. to no end. Um, you've even got places like, uh, it was like Iraq, Syria. Um, oh, Syria, these people have got wars going on. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're looking yeah. at us and just going soft, yeah. soft. Um, <laughs> we yeah. know you, you have food where you come from. Yeah. We know. <laughs> it, it was weird because the places... We fight for food. <laughs> that, uh, that's what I was saying. I, you know, my uh, my partner was just like, I'm really worried. I said, Don't worry, I will tap because like, I I fight for fun. These people are fighting for the next meal, so you better believe I'm not letting them break my heart. You know? um, Didn't you do yeah. some crazy maybe, thing? Maybe you I should have tapped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know he was doing yeah. it for food. Yeah. <laughs> 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 With your weigh-in and you did some yell and scream or something and everyone uh, was yeah. like, what is he doing? Yeah, well, because the, the mean mugging was going on like from when we rocked up to the hotel and over a few days and then I go to... So, so give us a sense of that. So you're, you're turning up, you're at an international mm-hmm. thing, all the athletes are staying at the same hotel, the Australian contingency turns up and all the other guys are already there yeah. and they're just eyeballing you as you're walking in the place. Yeah, and <laughs> it's not like I can even like take the piss by like going, hey champ, how you going? Because I don't speak English, so... <laughs> Right. I'm like, There's no well, way I'm, to endear them. I'm smiling yeah. and waving at people, and they're just not giving me a bow. So. Yeah, it was pretty. I mean, I didn't really expect. I didn't think we were going to be staying at the same hotel as yeah. a lot of these competitors. Um, but and also, I don't know anyone that's in my division or anything, so I don't know if I'm fighting guys in that room or or if Byron's fighting guys in that room. We have no idea. So we're yeah. and every seat is taken. So we're just two idiots standing <laughs> in the lobby <laughs> waiting for them to go get our room key. It takes like half an hour. We're just standing there like pretending to look at our phones. We've got no <laughs> Wi-Fi yet, so <laughs> I, I can't talk to anyone. Like, just scrolling through nothing, <laughs> acting like we've got something more important to do. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was pretty intimidating. But at the end of the day, like, um, they're, everyone's only human. So you have really no reason to be intimidated anyway. Some like, Kazakh people aren't. So, so was this your first big international yes. competition as yeah. well? Yeah. How, so did, how did you go in the competition, by the way? Oh, I was about the same. Oh, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I didn't get choked out. Right. Um, but I actually had a really, um, you know, when like you're fighting someone, you can tell if they're out to just absolutely kill you yeah. or they're there for a respectful fight mm. luckily it was the latter surprising because he was from Kazakhstan okay. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah he, he threw me twice he got the four points each time yep. and yeah, that was that was the match done yep. but uh, yeah inter- first international competition I'm glad I didn't get anything broken and yep. uh, yeah I've got the nerves out of the way I'm apparently going to the world hey. uh, the problem is they booked the tickets last minute and this is what happened with us it's like you're going are we even going and then about like a week and a half out they'll be like oh yeah here's your ticket make sure you're ready to go <laughs> so, oh, right mate yeah. I guess staying in the hotel was all the other fighters yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you've met them yeah. before so that'll be fine right. yeah. Yeah. yeah the ice has been broken yeah. um, <laughs> the problem was before they weren't sure if they had to worry about us or not uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, now they're, now they're like, like, I hope I get the Aussie guy. Yeah, yeah. They'll probably <laughs> well, be friendly actually, this time. That's yeah. the difference. Oh, they're sort of Australian. Oh, they're, they're nice. well, they're, we first were round, good, first round. We good for practice. We <laughs> <laughs> practice these guys. We were celebrities after the fight. All the other teams loved us. Yeah, they yeah. Were coming, they're, all of a sudden they, just, they spoke English and they're like, oh. yeah. Australia, good boys, good boys. Yeah. Good boys, yeah. we like them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think your striking uh, scared them a bit. 
Because yeah. you, you tagged that guy a fair bit and he just immediately went, right, no more punching. And that's what, what made him start oh, wrestling. Yeah. So I think if they think Australia. But that's yeah. it with um, the combat samba. Everyone's coming from judo or something or MMA. There was a few that were coming from MMA. You yeah. know, there was no one that's like only like they've grown up doing combat sambo they've grown yeah. up doing sambo instead so it was the same thing like i sort of knew that i was like there's a good chance that they'll be a bit green in the striking so how, how you you just uh, how did how was it that you got kind of roped into mm. uh, going to an international sambo because you, you didn't have a lot of exposure to the sport prior to no um but my coach is good um friends with saba yep. who's organizing who was going to go and yep. um he Lost his big fighter, the, his heavyweight, yeah, and he needed another sort of bigger guy or just anyone. No one at the gym was willing to go to Lebanon, so he asked my coach <laughs> if he's like, "If you know anyone, it's like to do sambo. What's that? That's Russian guys throwing each other around. Hmm, don't know. What about Lebanon? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> none of that sounds great, does it? Like it's <laughs> the text I got for the for the championship it had nothing. Didn't say championship anyway. It was like, Byron, I'd like to send you here. And then it was a picture of <laughs> Lebanon and, and, and June Air where we were staying. And it was like the the, the geo marker was right in the middle. I was like, mm, mm. Uh, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do yeah, wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and why don't yeah. you love me anymore? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think Lebanon's getting a bit of a bad rap though. Um, yeah, they were, yeah, we were expecting. I was expecting like war torn. Like <laughs> they've had a few explosions in the last couple of years. I thought yeah. everyone was going to be on edge, but we get there and it's like, yeah, cool. nicest people. Yeah, they were like very eager to show us around and like just civilians on the street. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Savo, uh, the coach, would meet and because he's like that, he would just talk to anyone. And yeah. they're like, "Hey, let me show you around." They showed us around this whole city, just random people that we'd bump into. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so Byron, who 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 are the superstars of the Sambo world at the moment? Uh, I'd say that's kind of emerging right now. Mainly right. Um, the Russian team and the Ukrainian team. They're going to okay. be the guys that are going to the finals. Jeez, that'd be an interesting final then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I won't be going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, they're competing under Fias at the moment. So, if you are interested in watching uh, the Russian fighters mm-hmm. uh, you just look, look at the back patch it will say fias on it instead so um what does that mean uh, uh it's a instead of russia they're being forced to pretend they're not russian yeah okay <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. oh cool yeah so um but obviously their guys are excellent i mean <laughs> you'd expect they put a lot of money in it it is a bit of a struggle though because they are competing against central asian countries which are just just masterful wrestlers it's right up there um uh, but obviously the the funding there's a disparity there. Yeah. So a lot of the really, really talented grapplers will go to wrestling, go to judo, because that's where a bit more of the money, a bit more of the support's coming from. Yeah. But um, FIAS, the international body, is really, really trying to, to fix that. Uh, so I can't really say there's too many, like, famous names right now. Yeah. Um, but I suspect that in the coming few years, while they get more coverage out there, we're going to be able to identify them a bit easier. There's a lot of these sports that are kind of emerging now, kind of out, out of uh, as alternatives in some cases to MMA, but also as a, as a breeding ground for for talent that might find its yeah. way onto a bigger stage as well. So it's a super interesting time in, in mixed martial arts and and sambo as well. So uh, and where do, where do you see uh, the future of the sport here in the country, and and do you see a uh, a time when it might become professional internationally and something that an athlete can look forward to doing as a job perhaps one day. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. Um, that's the goal is basically to um, so put in a system in place where like judo and, and other countries, like wrestling, there's basically a school program. Mm-hmm. So coaches are being paid um, as well as athletes are able to get sponsorships and um, you know complete compete that way. And there's nothing against doing MMA as well in the rules of Sambo. So you can be like a top level Sambo athlete, combat Sambo guy. Mm-hmm. You can go do some MMA fights. Mm. Um, and that was um, Fedor's problem, yeah. is that he couldn't still compete in Sambo while he signed a contract of the UFC. So, uh, yeah. UFC restricted. So UFC yeah. was yeah. pushing that element. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. Um, he took issue with that, which is why he actually didn't end up going through. Mm. So it's that and that they wanted a stadium built in Russia as well. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That that, that, yeah. that was that was also part kind of it. Of yeah. thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. That was a fine print down the middle. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And you build the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, they've just built the international uh, center. A bit unfortunate timing with that, because um, you know you want to be able to go over there and and have a hub where all of the international coaches can come get accredited. Yeah, all the athletes can come together. Um, and that's in Russia, yeah, that's presumably. In Russia, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've they've actually done uh, a lot of good stuff in terms of supporting the smaller countries. I'll be actually starting a federation in Cambodia. Oh, um, really? Wow. Yeah, so that's going to be the project for the next four or five years is getting that <coughs> up and running. Um, and they will, and, you know, especially the Southeast Asian, uh, with well, the Oceanic uh, Federation, they call you up and they say, yep, we want you to do this. And we will provide equipment, mats, uniforms. And, and for these kids, so I'm, I'm half Cambodian, which is why I'm able to do that. Right. Um, you know, you see these kids and sport's a really good way for them to get lifted up. Yeah. And, you know, they can coach it. They can potentially get money from, from winning competitions. Mm. And it can just really bring them out of um, these sort of awful situations. Give them something to do as well. Yeah. Um, so Yeah, give kids yeah. discipline that might not yeah. otherwise have a reason to have any. Yeah, I go to yeah. Cambodia and you can't, my heart bleeds a bit um, when you see the sort of state uh, yeah. that it can be in. So um, they've actually put a lot of, even Cambodian governments trying to, sport a lot more nowadays as well so, so. You, you obviously grew grew up here yes and yeah, yeah. and uh, so and in, and in going back uh, uh, have you uh, have you had the chance to go back and take sambo with you as yet to in Cambodia? Any, yeah i've visited i've trained with a, a couple of judo clubs there yeah and uh some of the younger guys are like oh what was that uh, <laughs> and uh, they see me you know post stuff from the sambo club and they're reacting to it and so yeah i know who's going to be receptive keen when i go there yeah. um so yeah, I mean, they, they were very, very welcoming at the judo clubs. Um, they initially, the federation was talking with the wrestling and the judo clubs there, mm-hmm. but then they you know, found out I had dual citizenship, so they're like, oh, actually, if you actually coach Sambo, that's probably a better option. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I've gone over there. They seem quite receptive to it, and there's a big, massive wrestling at this. So they call it the Olympic Stadium, even though they've never had an Olympics there. <laughs> <laughs> they get ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> massive wrestling mat. Yeah. All dusty, hasn't been used in years, so mm. I'm going to go in there and I sort of discuss, like, is it possible to use that? We start a club, and they're like, yeah, it could be. I was like, that's a good spot to awesome. wow. get started. Wow. Wow, yeah. so you're literally taking Sambo to the Olympic Stadium to in the Cambodia. People. Yes. To the people. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. Maybe you bring the Olympics to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is... <laughs> yeah, we'll see about Sambo that. is a sport. Is, yeah. is Sambo, it's not, it's not an Olympic sport or anything, is it? It's recognised by the IOC. It is, okay. It's going to be a bit of a battle uh, getting it, because it's so similar to wrestling and or judo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're more like I think there was a comment I saw in some thread, and it was like, "Yeah, beach samba is more likely to be recognised than sport or combat oh, at this stage, yeah, because right. it's just got such a it's way more popular than the other two styles. Right. Um, obviously, all you need is sand and yeah, yeah, just the will to get out there. And and, and how did samba? Uh, how did the the beach samba emerge? Is it just like a casualised version of of the yeah. formal sport? Where Similar to beach wrestling, it's just okay. um, you know hop in the sand and, yep. and go for it and then enough people do it they're like oh we better make some rules here yep. there's no groundwork actually it's a bit very similar to judo actually okay um so and that's because i'm not sure if you ever grappled on sand it's uh <laughs> you just, harder, yeah. it's, it, <laughs> it's just, really is just like yeah just it's hard enough to walk. <laughs> so i think it's very exfoliating it yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard yeah. enough to walk on yeah. soft sand. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> there's an aim there to to make it um we'll put it in the olympics um, and I'm sure a lot of the athletes would really, really like that and like the opportunity. Yeah. So, so what are Sambo athletes uh, preparing themselves for? Is it uh, competitions like the the one that you've just been to in Lebanon, regional competitions, and then uh, the Worlds? Is that yeah. the natural progression that athletes look forward to? Yep. Like Joe? Yeah. Yep. And there's a few <laughs> cups as well that offer cash prizes. Yep. So, um, yeah, they basically people are constantly working towards those sort of things. And obviously they get... Um, the old way was like if you won a national competition or the Worlds, you, bec- you got given the Master Sport certificate and then yeah. you can start a club and people go, oh, yeah, you're the world champion, you're this, and yeah. you make money that way. But now they're trying to be like, yeah, here's prizes, here's cash. In yeah. the last one, there was one that was like 10K or something like that. So Wow. You know, if, I mean, you have to win it. But oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> easier said than done when there's like, you know, hundreds of other guys just sitting out the door. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're really trying to push it that way but i think ultimately we want it in the olympics because then you get so much support from the government and the olympics themselves is such a prestigious event is it almost a shame that the the, the political climate at the moment isn't really conducive to seeing a a, 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 a sport of uh, russian origin be successful and it's almost like 
the sport's holding its breath for this to blow over so that it can, you know, really be seen for what it is rather than just a, you know, somehow attached to, you know, Russia or, or whatever might be going on at the moment. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, without just because um, people be listening without getting too deep into the politics, it has mm. split community a bit. Yeah. And then I think um, other people who are involved can but read that. Could every, can everybody agree to not like the Cambodian people, though? Or yeah. is it just... <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think, All the yeah. Ukrainians that are Russian, ah, Cambodians. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had some, you know, because I'm half Cambodian, but I've got some friends without a filter, and, and one of them said, "Yeah, I've met a lot of Thai people, and they think Cambodia is the ghetto or Southeast Asia." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, thanks, mate." <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, uh, just. Yeah, pushing forward with it all and yep. yeah, hopefully it all works out. Waiting, waiting yeah. for it all to blow over and see what, yeah. what comes on the other side of it. Yeah, yeah. I think when you say Samba was a Soviet sport or a Russian sport, it makes it really hard. And yep. then um, also some people suddenly do this at you and you go, oh, I'm Ukrainian, I'm half Ukrainian. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> you're, allowed, you're allowed to talk to me about this. Um, but I, yeah, I think hopefully people can um, separate that and understand that people are training the sport, they're putting a lot of love into it uh, no matter where they're from. Yeah. Um, yeah, we separate that. It's very, you know, we're very clear on the rules when you when you go to training, where everyone's there to kind of not think about all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're there to you know, learn to slam each other, and <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and but not there to fight. Head. We're there to fight. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly. The the beach yeah. event that you've got coming up. Uh, when and where is that? That's going to be in uh, January, mm-hmm. and it's going to be at Glenelg. Okay. Uh, we are yet to talk about that with their council. Um, uh, so the council will find out. They'll yeah, nice. they'll know. Yeah. They'll love it. So <laughs> they're going to do stop gonna it. We're going to get contacted soon. Um, <laughs> that, that was an initial plan was chuck up four flags and just go for it. But um, yeah, we've decided we'd better ask for permission. But <laughs> uh, okay. We have trained there. We've, we've actually just gone down to you know, Beach because you know, our club's near there. And yeah. looked really, really weird in our little outfits on the beach. <laughs> yeah. People go, oh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that'll be in January. Um, the details, um, look for them soon on the uh, South Australian Federation page and also my club, Vela Sambo Academy, will we'll post about it there. Vela Sambo Academy. Yeah, Where else is that located? Uh, Glendale Community Centre at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. So both of these clubs are in the south. Um, mm-hmm. So one's at the Bill YMCA off Oakland's Road. Yeah. And then uh, my club runs Tuesdays, Thursdays at Glendale Community Centre. Mm-hmm. Um, when I move up north, hopefully we'll get something sorted there. Um, yep. To take over well. cardio flex, is that? <laughs> <what you're saying? laughs> a lot of mat area there as well. I think they call that the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, I, think, I think Sava already <laughs> tried <Ike>. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sava did say something about you having some issues with one of the councils or, or something similar. They said that you'd have a good story about that. I'm not sure I should start oh. in council members. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. Oh, God, like he wants. Uh, some difficulties, it, I guess. It, it was in mainly yeah, trying to get access to a room at the YMCA, um, but it, it it boils down to one thing, and that's that it's hard to find a space. And I think it that's is, a yeah. problem that everyone's having. Um, I know it's easy to take it um, personally because you work so hard and saying you get all the the paperwork done, you hand it in there, and especially for Sava, English is second language. And you put it on someone's desk and it's taken you weeks. Yeah. And then they go, uh, you don't get it. And he goes, why? And oh, they can't tell everybody. Yeah. Um, but it's easy to get you know, upset. We've, we've all gone through the process. We're doing the same thing with yeah. the arm wrestling club at the moment, trying yeah. to find a new space. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I That's think, why there's yeah. two arm wrestling tables in here yeah. at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think the problem is more that we're looking for a home. So if anyone, you know, because we've got people who are ready to coach. So if there are clubs out there that you want someone to, to run some sample classes at your club, yeah. Um, get in touch with us. We're not, you know, we're not asking for the world. We're just looking for, for places so we can grow and build the community and we want to work with other martial arts and other, other clubs. It's not, yeah. it's not, not a lot of equipment required, is it? Like, it's just... We will, we'll figure, because we've got uniforms. Um, Sava's extremely generous. He'll support with uniforms. He can contact the Federa- Inter- International Federation and sort out things like a wrestling mat that goes over the top of, of other mats and try and figure out how to support and grow your club at the same time. Wonderful. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're just looking to make connections. We're not looking to, yep. I don't know, make an empire or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yep. Um, yeah, just because we want more people to enjoy the thing we're doing and if more people get into it, we can actually have real competitions, not... Yeah, you know, one match and not just beating up champ. guys doing capoeira down at the beach. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You know? so, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, well, the, we're in a very similar situation with the arm wrestling club, but yeah, uh, trying to find 
uh, locations, equipment, mm. the port, everything like that can be very difficult. But I, uh, I yeah. think it can be, and I think there's so so many uh, of these um, say almost obscure sports that are now starting to emerge, and and, and at the same time, and, and building in, in in popularity, and a little bit like uh, MMA might have been say ten or fifteen years ago, where there really wasn't a, a space for it to fit in. It kind of had to make its own space, and so uh-huh. uh, you have gyms emerge like Cardio Flex that cater specifically uh, to. Uh, that need, um, but uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot of support coming from, say, the the public sector uh, with respect to, uh, especially um, combat sport, uh, combat sports in particular. There seems to be a, a reticence to make a commitment to uh, uh, to combat sports or any sport that might um, have an elevated risk of harm, for instance. Um, mm. Uh, so, which is uh, well, it, 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 given that these are the sports that are increasing in popularity, it. it it seemingly uh, appears to me that perhaps the government's behind the eight ball on this and, and councils need to perhaps review some of their processes and procedures in accommodating some of these emerging uh, sports in our communities. Mm. It was interesting before that you were talking about with footwork in that moment, that quarter second where you have the, when you're in position to attack your opponent yeah. or they're, they're going to attack you. One of the examples that popped up when, in my mind that I was thinking of was uh, Robert Whitaker when he fought Israel Adesanya. And Whitaker um, was the champion who's from Australia. Uh, he was fighting against Israel Adesanya, who's very uh, sort of long, rangy kind of fighter, but uh, an excellent striker. Um, he said after the fight, because uh, Israel ended up winning that fight by, uh, by knockout, that uh, he noticed with Robert Whitaker's style of footwork is that he's very bouncy, and he's bouncing, bouncing, and then... When he's about to attack, he's flat-footed for like half a second, mm. and that's when he's going to leap in and do his sort of blitz move. And so he would he would move and wait for Robert to go flat-footed, and then he would move again, so mm. that he could never get set into his position to really blitz in yep. properly. So then he was trying to blitz in from positions he wasn't comfortable with, yeah. um, which I found really interesting. Well, there's so many little games like that that are going on, even subconsciously. Right? <laughs> Yeah, but you practice enough that you don't have to think about it. You practice enough that when you, the moment's right to throw, your your mind just knows there it is. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but do yeah, there's heaps of that going on. Do Do you have a much of an opportunity as a fighter to be able to uh, check out what other fighters have done so you can kind of analyse them? Maybe not quite to that degree, but understand where the opportunities to win might be, oh, or is it like very much just staying in your lane and playing it in the moment? Well, at this like level. I think that if you just do as much as you can to grow yourself mm-hmm. and um, prepare yourself as well as you can, that it doesn't really matter until you sort of get to the higher level where everyone has like no holes. Yeah. So you have to really delve in and go searching for it. It's important to know what sort of um, fight you can expect, mm. whether if someone's just head down, march forward and going to try and take your head off for the entire fight, you're like, okay, well, I've got to be maybe practicing a few of these combos and, yeah. um, or maybe I'm going to be, yeah, like um, work to structure the fight in your favour. Yeah. So maybe at the end of the round or start to grapple heavy so that he doesn't have the energy in his arms or something like that. Yeah, it's sort of, that's what I've found. It's good to just have um, a bit of knowledge of what their style is. Yeah. With that last fight that fight. you had where you won, was it the first minute or something you got in, with the uh, the inverted triangle almost? Oh, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I... um before last? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this last one, uh, I didn't have a whole lot to go off of because he hadn't fought in four years. Yeah. So, and that was on YouTube, so I got to watch that a couple of times and... Uh, but it was a different fight to how I fight. So that was just a slug fest until one of them got too tired to continue mm-hmm. and then he got on top and just pounded him out. Yeah. Whereas that's not how I fight. So there's not a whole lot that I could take from that at all. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect. I'm like, four years later, you can't be like, oh, he dips his head there when he throws <laughs> this because I'm right. like, well, he's had plenty of time to – he's probably got a completely different style, which he did, yeah. Yeah. And – um. Yeah, so I got um, – it's like I was saying, when you find – when your mind just knows the right time to throw, um, yeah, about, about 30 seconds into the fight, the throw, first punch I threw, I think, um, got him cornered, just in, just guided him into the right spot, and there it is, landed and put him down. 
Yeah. Um, and then um, made it out of that round. And next round, um, yeah, so we were sort of expecting him to be – it was a heavy grappling gym. Yeah. So And he was a strong-looking dude, especially yeah. – um, at his age and I felt that old man strength against the cage yeah you know, sort of like I tried something to just toss me around the cage yeah. like I was nothing yeah, yeah. Um, so he's a strong dude because your opponent was about 38 38 yeah. years old yeah I think yeah. so looked amazing yeah he's in great yeah. shape well uh, there's a reason he's still fighting is because he takes care of himself you know yeah and he looks great and um, yeah it um, but there's only you know um so many punches know, you can take. Yeah, in the that's fight. it. Like he's, <laughs> at this level, it's like, what is he fighting for? Because I'm fighting for a career, and I'm like, this is my dream. I, I was going to yeah. ask you about that. This is this is your dream, and and so you do see a, a career path um, moving forward. This isn't just for fun now. So yeah. when when you go to uh, the Sambo Championships, for instance, that's to accumulate experience so Absolutely. that you can envelop that into your training and and bring a a, a, a better package, a more complete package to the cage, yeah. um, and. When when did it occur to you that this is what I want to do? Um, probably the first time I walked into the Muay Thai gym. When yeah, I was 14. You, you yeah. knew you knew then. Yeah, I was like for sure, like, um, and I wasn't good. Yeah, and then I started to get the hang of things, and I was falling in love with it. And I was like, yeah, now I'm, yeah, everything is looking better. I'm like, cool. If I keep this up, I'm like, I wonder how good I can be. And then. Um, now it's good to it's good to realize that I'm on the right track. So you, you've got a now, bit of a roll. You now feel like you're on that pathway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got the ball rolling now. Yeah, so the ball rolling, yeah, definitely. Momentum and and some outstanding recent results as well. So uh, against some pretty formidable uh, opponents. Um, yeah. And uh, so and when you reflect on this, do you ever, ever watch your fights back? I'm my biggest fan. You are. Yeah. Excellent. No worries. Yeah, I have to watch it on mute because I get embarrassed because my girlfriend will hear it and she's like, you're watching. Did you? Did you <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Something yeah. we've both got in common, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm watching it like for two different reasons. I'm be watching it for because I find myself entertaining. Yeah. I'm like, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm bored watching my fight, then I know everyone else is bored. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, and then also obviously for I judge myself pretty harshly. Yeah, and I watch my fights and like, oh, I was very slow there. Or well, that round, I really got, um, I lifted off the accelerator there a bit too much. Yeah, yeah, something, something like so, that. So or or I watch a particular moment and I remember what I was thinking, mm. and I was like, I've got to fix that because I was yeah. So, so you, as you as you're watching yourself back, are you kind of thinking, "Oh, that's what I was thinking at the time, and this is what I do different now as being as a, as an observer," or I yeah. didn't realize that? Like, how much of yeah. when you're watching an observance of yourself post fight, are you thinking, oh, "I had no idea that was going on," or yeah. you're pretty um, conscious of, it and it's just really fine tuning. Um, this is the importance of like um, the coaches in the corner, mm -hmm. so they'll see. A shot that they want you to land and you don't even realise because there's a lot going on and you're also trying to be wary of what they're throwing yeah. that it's um, it's a skill to be able to read what's open and um, that's why it's good to have that's what's so important about having good coaches in your corner yeah. teammates in your corner so that when I go and sit on the stool one coach will so my head coach Craig Ike um, he will give me certain shots that he, he's like keep doing this you're doing that right keep working on that and i want to see this shot i want to see this shot and then he'll say repeat it back to me yeah because if you're a bit exhausted yeah you might not have like in a, in a fight i've had that where he said a whole lot to me and it's gone and you're nodding and i'm nodding but it's <laughs> gone through one ear out of the other and i'm just trying to recover yeah you know and then he'll say say it back to me and i'll say it back and like, cool we're on the same page and then Shane is good to have in my corner, Shane Mitchell, because he'll just give me one thing. He'll be like, oh, he's dropping his hand here. So look for that. Yeah. yeah. So important to have good corner. And uh, That's it. You can see yeah. the difference in, in fighters, uh, and sometimes the corner can be the difference in winning or losing, uh, especially with guys like uh, say George St. Pierre when he would go into the corner in between rounds and you'd get – 
uh, his coach very, very calm. Would would you spend this first sort of twenty seconds? Okay, George, just slow your breathing. We're just gonna relax. Like no advice about the thing, just calming him down, like Greg Jackson. And then uh, uh, after that, he would just be like, okay, two sentences of advice. This is what you need to do. Yeah. But it was more about let's get you to recover, slow your heart rate down. And sometimes you see other corners <laughs> yelling <laughs> at their fighter yeah. more than it's like, oh God, let him go. You know? So, yeah. I did. think that comes through probably experience as well. Like, our coach has been in the scene for a long time. So he knows that, like, after the first round, let's just, especially for someone's first fight, mm. if they're going balls to the walls, usually that's what you're doing your first fight. You go balls to the walls and it makes it to the second round. Well, then you sit down at a stool and you've your mind is just in shambles. So that all he's really got is calming down. You know, so he's been around the ring. He knows, um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, um, when I'm watching my fights now, I'll be like, why was he saying, why was he telling me to look at that? And I'll watch it. I'm like, oh, I can see why uh, he's looking for it. Yeah. And if I can't, then I'll ask him. I'll say, why would you sh- say throw this? And, yeah, he'll tell me. And I'm like, I didn't even think of that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, that, that ca- a calm voice comes through so much clearer uh, than somebody who's yelling and screaming, especially yeah. in that sort of situation. Um, I remember I was playing football and it'd be like, you know, everyone, you get the ball, 30 people are yelling for, you know, to, you to throow the ball or hit yeah. the ball to them or kick yeah. the ball to them. And there was always one of the guys on my team that would just be like, yeah, just give it to me, mate. Like, just real nice, <laughs> calm. And every time it was like, yeah, no worries. Like, it was just yeah, real he, clear. He played for the other side. As well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Put on different jerseys each yeah. week, every week. Just give me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true, though, because there's so much chaos going on that, like, if someone's screaming, like, a full sentence, I'm not going to be, like, mm. trying to think of what, like, understand what he was saying while I'm fighting someone. Yeah. So, yeah, just short, yeah. And I think um, teammates don't quite understand it, so they'll scream out <laughs> certain things. They're like, when he circles here, do this. And I'm like, <laughs> just... Yeah. I, I love it's I love hearing that. Yeah. Get, up. Yeah. get up! Just get up! Get <laughs> up! Hit him! Yeah. Get up! Hit him! Win! <laughs> yeah, but, but there is a little bit of that where, um, like, you'll know you know how to get up from a certain position, and if you're like, okay, I just need a few seconds to breathe here, but you the coach knows you don't have time to breathe here. Like, if you get up and you win the rest of this round, you win the round. Mm. Or you might win the fight. So it's like, no, you need to get up now. So the people are hearing, just get up. Yeah, yeah. But there's a, yeah, you know. But yeah. from the crowd, some people will just say, oh, this You're is the boring, crowd. get yeah. him up. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been in the cage and just heard your mum? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. the thousands how, of voices. No. I have no idea how I've never heard my girlfriend because she, yeah. she will be right near the cage and she's screaming the whole time. <laughs> But um, or, yeah. already just like blanking it out. It's yeah. like t- I'm it's pretty just good in preparation at it. for yeah. marriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm on top of that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's pretty tunnel vision. on um, you know, focused on what you're doing. So I only hear the voices that I really recognise in that situation. Like my head coach. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, weight divisions in Sambo. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, how does it grade up? Oh, I did know all of them for my test, but here what, we go. What is, it, what, what is your division? It's usually under 71. Okay. But I'm getting married soon, so now <laughs> it's under 70, uh, 79. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so they're next to each other. Um, they used yeah. to be really close to judo, and yeah. then I think they went, no, we want to get a bit closer to sort of um, other weight classes for like fighting. But yeah. Um, so they've changed it all. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's there's quite a few. There's, uh, I think there'd be something like Seven seven categories at least, and yeah. and and is um uh, is weight cutting uh, prevalent in sambo at, at competition? Yeah. So yeah. so guys will kind yeah. of uh, lean we in. observed how they were doing it. it yeah, yeah, it was the day before, just like in um, MMA, okay. twenty four hours before. Yeah, so you know there's the opportunity to cut weight, but for the bigger guys, there was under ninety eight kilos. Okay, in MMA, there's only um. Like, like if you're over 93 kilos, then you're in heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and that's all the way to 120. So yeah, it's a big gap. So there's that extra. I think under 98 was heavyweight. Yeah, and I think anything over that was um, 
super heavyweight. Super heavyweight. I don't know if that, that <laughs> had a limit. I'm not sure. It, <laughs> it was just one guy. He looked like the Iranian Hulk. Um, but, yeah. like, <laughs> and, but, you know, as if the Photoshop was real. real yeah. And uh, what, what would he have been in? Uh, I don't know. If there was a limit, he was pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But he, he lost just from getting tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got but the other guy yeah. was just as big, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, he lost just from getting tired. Yeah, the 120 um, kilo limit, you'd think, oh, it, you know, no one would sort of be worried about trying to cut to that. A lot of the fighters in the UFC did have to cut weight at that. Mark mm. Hunt, uh, yeah. uh, Tim Sylvia, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. You know, um, Even guys that Shane are Carmen. like that big on TV, like you'll meet... They look like they're the smaller. So there's a fella who from Australia who f- was he's fought in the UFC, but he was on the Ultimate Fighter for the UFC called Ben Sassoli. Mm-hmm. Um, he's fought at DFC. He was the DFC champion, heavyweight champion at one point, mm-hmm. um, and he was the cornerman for one of my fights um, this year. Oh, cool! And he walked into the cage after the fight, and I'm um, like, this is just. Like he cast a shadow <laughs> over the whole ring. It's just a wall, yeah. and he was not even a big guy, really. When you watch the on the TV, he's smaller than the other guys. But I'm like, how is this guy 120 kilos? And mm-hmm. Like, well, he's not. He'll be like 130, 135, or whatever. And and now your family found a home under under 90. Yeah, yeah. I'm at middleweight now, 84 kilos. 84 yeah. kilos. Yeah. And and uh, how did, how was that feeling for you as you because obviously you're still growing as well. How how yeah. old are you now? 20, 26. Just 26. 26. So you you still physically you're filling out and are yeah. you feeling it a struggle or is it? This uh, last one was literally the easiest water cut that I've done. Okay. I've done a few now. Yeah. Um, and that was just from doing all the correct steps leading up to you know. Um, and dieting sucks, but it like I feel the best that I feel like fittest and healthiest when I'm dieting that yeah. hard, you know, as well. And it also gives the sensation of like being an actual fighter and yeah. doing all the pieces. Whereas at light heavyweight, I don't have to do that, you know. I just do a <laughs> bit of running to get fit, and then I'm already underweight. You know? yeah. How much did you weigh? So you weighed 84, and on the day, obviously, yeah. What did you weigh? At the fight night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that so f- straight away I just go back into fluids, mm. and you got to try and pace yourself because if you smash it down too fast, you start cramping up. But I got back to my mate's house to pick my car up. He drove me to the weigh-ins. Obviously, I'm not going to drive to weigh-ins when mm-hmm. I'm like that. I got back, and I was all ready after like two two liters of water. I was back up to almost 88. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so that's like the fluid and then I'll take a bit of time and then I'll, um, when I can, I'll start eating, you know, and I'll eat pretty big that night and I'll stay up as late as I can and then I'll eat again. Before you go to sleep? Before I go to sleep. Okay. And then usually my body clock will wake me up at like seven in the morning. Yeah. And so I'll get up and I'll go eat again. Yeah. And then I'll go back to sleep and then wake up at like one in the afternoon or something like that. Yeah, right. try to sleep as much as I can. I usually manage to sleep until about one. And what were you weighing on final? <laughs> right. So <laughs> the last, the last one. I don't know. I think this can't be real. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I've like on fight night. I was ninety kilos. Right. And this time I did the same. <laughs> I did the same thing and I was like ninety three and a half kilos. <laughs> <laughs> so that's ten kilos in twenty four hours. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you, you did, you look like a different human being. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But like the guys I was fighting at light heavyweight, they do that, you know? Yeah. So, and they, that's an even, like they're a bit bigger, so it's even, yep. the dip, like the weight that they put back on is even more. So do you feel like naturally you're in the the right division now? Or, or do you yeah. feel like there, there'll be a time when you'll step back up into the heavier division? Maybe when I'm old and lazy, old and lazy. I can't be bothered cutting yep. weights. <laughs> but yeah, the weight like the water cut is a breeze. It's yep. like four kilos, and it's nothing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had I gave my I give myself from like nine in the morning until four when we have to leave. Yeah. And I'll have like a two hour nap in the middle of that because it's going so easy. You know, like yep. some, uh, the water cut is no problem. The dining is. I'm a foodie. And I, eat <laughs> a lot, I eat a lot, and I mean, you know. Um, so dieting is the hardest part, especially when I've got teammates that are struggling to keep weight on. 
Yeah. And they're telling me, oh, oh, I'm like having to eat all these calories. I'm like 3,000 calories today. I'm <laughs> having to put Nutella on my crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't hear it. You're like, it. I've had <laughs> half a lettuce leaf and an ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it had, has it taken you a while to find out what works for you? Like it, it did something click a few fights ago where you went, ah, oh, this, is, this is what works nicely for me. This is a good uh, routine. I always and, find. Because you seem to be sleeping a lot. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good with my sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like in the lead up to the fight, I remember you yeah. saying on fight night that you, you had yeah. been sleeping a lot that day and yeah. um and in some part because the fight was later on that night. Yeah. Um so you wanted to make sure that, you know, your body clock was right for the fight and that you were hundred percent alert. Yeah, absolutely. Um but um there's a f- you know, I'm still learning, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. And I'm probably get some help for the next one just to really be on top like bang on top of everything and then that'll take the stress out of trying to figure everything out myself as well yeah and i've got teammates that have been that have played around with diet for um you know since high school yeah um, and they've been great help for me yeah. and then lots of fighters that have also had to do the same thing mm. you know obviously they've done the same thing like shane mitchell's for now he's fighting at an even smaller weight yeah um but yeah he's done that plenty of times and just yeah. advice from all these people but it's about just finding the right foods that are enjoyable mm, yeah. that you can eat more of yeah and cutting out all the snacks early yeah yeah and all the rubbish all the fun stuff yeah so apart from the <laughs> snacks well, who's your biggest challenge in the division now who, who are you looking at apart from snacks being the, snacks. Being the thing you've got in to the, battle in the red quarter <laughs> it's a pile of chips yeah. <laughs> and some skittles <laughs> um, yeah. so uh, when yeah, so uh, so who who have you got your eye on, and and how where do you see your progress uh, from here? Uh, well, it'd be good if I could get another fight at the next Apex show, mm-hmm. um, and even if something pops up before the end of the year, mm-hmm. I sort of told everyone that I would take the rest of the year off because it's been a busy year, good fighting. Yeah, but. Um, Maybe one but more next week. Itching for another one. <laughs> you know? one yeah, you have like I have like two days off, and I'm like. Like after the fight and then starts to <laughs> set back in rea- reality and I'm like, I want to get it back in there yeah, well, and do well, it again. The ultimate, you know? ultimate goal being getting into UFC or having the opportunity to yeah. get to that. Yeah. What, what does it take to get to that point? Or is there, a, is there a pathway you can follow or if you win a championship in DFC and then I th- maybe... I think that's a good way to go, um, championship in UFC, because, yeah, like I said, Ben's assault. We've had a number of fighters from the DFC go mm. to the UFC. Shane Mitchell is... Like been knocking on the door for like five years. Yeah, so close. Um, and now they're coming to Perth. So I've been harassing all of their pages on Instagram and tagging <laughs> him in. I'm like, if he's not on this fight card, we're going to riot. <laughs> yeah, so um, it'll help having a teammate in the UFC, of course. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or just at, like anyone from Adelaide because I don't know, they would have maybe been fighting on the UFC when they came to Adelaide, but I don't know yeah. if there's any fighters from Adelaide that were on here awesome. when they yeah, fought because when they talk yeah. about Australia, everyone knows what um, Sydney and Queensland Brisbane and, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and Perth is now becoming quite the home for the UFC as well. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, where's Elvis Sinisek from? Was he from Melbourne? Do you remember Who's Elvis? That? Elvis Sinisek? I don't know that. Name. Oh, he, he, I'm a casual. Okay. <laughs> he, was the, he was in the early UFC days. Okay. Uh, uh, he beat Jeremy Horn by double armbar and then got absolutely destroyed by Tito Ortiz the next fight. Oh, uh, actually, I think he's got one of the worst records in the UFC. It was like one, <laughs> one and six or something. So you should have known about him. All, all yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A shiny example. Yeah. Maybe some footsteps you can, po- uh, footsteps yeah. you can yeah. follow in. No, yeah. couldn't, have, <laughs> couldn't have been Adelaide. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. No, he, yeah, if he, he was, we'd disown him. Yeah. Lost to Forrest Griffin, and I don't know. He he uh, he was the king of rock and rumble. Was his ah? Oh, so yeah, he, he did have a good yeah good yeah, nickname. Good yeah. nickname. We do like a good nickname, right? Yeah, yeah. here on the podcast, yeah. one of our favourite things. That's why we like Joe so much. Tiki, <laughs> I think it's between him and Tiki Gozen, who's zero uh, four in the UFC. So they were between the, the worst fighting records, but yeah, just a bit of trivia <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. But in the middleweight division, I don't know how many. I think I'm ranked number seven or eight in Australia, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess anyone above that, but I will just take anyone to be honest. Yeah. yeah. In the middleweight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you're getting towards the pointy end of things when there's only, uh, you know, a handful of so people uh, above you in the ranking. So it looks like you're knocking on the door of, you could only be, you know, a couple of good fights away from really being there. Who's the number one well, at the moment? Um, 
Oh, some kid actually. Some just some kid. Someone, some, some kid. Someone this that we went Byron. to uh, <laughs> Lebanon with that, com- that competed oh, with us really? from the New Zealand team. Uh-huh. He's he coaches a kid that's number one in middleweight. Yeah. Oh, really? So there's yeah. a uh, I don't know anything about it, but there's some show that they do like a whole bunch of fights over a weekend or two weekends or something like that. So yep. the, yeah. So some people have like if they win the whole thing, then they'll have like four wins in two weeks. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a, an easy way for them to rack yeah. up some points. So that's he's in number one spot, and he's yeah, all of his wins were in like two weeks. <laughs> oh. and, and when are you finding him? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If he's, I don't know if these any of these guys are active because um, I don't think there's anyone in the top ten that has a fight lined up or anything. Wow. Yeah. frustrating okay. but well it doesn't matter because there's always new guys coming through that have you know um there's shows elsewhere i'll keep tabs on like if i see um anyone that's a sort of a heavier weight then i keep tabs and i'll check it out and see if they look like they're like all about it and then i'll be like hey i might fight that guy <laughs> well that's what that's what i did with um d because oh, he, yeah. he fought on a the same card as at demolition yeah at demolition yep I think he fought on the same card as one of my teammates, I think. Yeah. And then I saw that there was middleweights and I watched that fight and I was like, oh, I could fight him or I could fight the guys fighting. Yeah. And so I checked him out and there wasn't a whole lot to watch of his, but Yeah. Um and then it turns out the yeah, coach is like, hey, we've got some guy's name is like uh, D Samasoni or something. I was like, Oh yeah, I wonder who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I knew who it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's another he's another beast at mid- middleweight, somebody yeah. who, who steps into oh, the cage looking he was, like he's he hundred and ten kilos <laughs> somehow, but he, you know, he's somehow yeah. a middleweight. He was dude. heavier than I was. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he spoke to me after and then uh, like the next day he said, How much do you weigh? I was like, I haven't checked and he's like, I'm ninety three kilos. I'm like, Wow. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, so he, oh, he looked every part of it too. Yeah, I mean, he was a big, big guy. He felt like it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, who's been your toughest opponent so far? Uh, they're all tough in different sort of. Um, who's been your weakest? No, you think that question is tough. Every, <laughs> every, one of, every one of Joe's opponents just lent forward. Yeah. <laughs> it better not be me. Don't say yeah. more. No, nah, they're all been <laughs> tough. Like to th- there was this guy in Lebanon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think this last fight was the fight where I've been most like each fight I'm getting more and more there, but this one I've been most ready. I was most switched on. I, was, I showed up. I was, I was there and I was on point and I'd made absolutely no mistakes in the lead up to the fight, dotted mm. all the I's, crossed all the T's and um, it really showed that night. Yeah. Mm. As, as somebody that had the privilege of standing in, in, in the cage as fighters came out all night, um, it, the, the whole energy of the room changed when you started to proceed. It, it, that as soon as, as, soon as uh, the, those first few chords of Die Straight started to play, <laughs> people started to go crazy. Yeah. Um, how how is it that money for nothing became your your song, and what's the association and how how did that how did that all come about? I um I was play- <laughs> yeah so I was playing video games on my computer with um some of the boys and the playlist was just filtering through songs yeah and that came on with the extra long build up I was like this is <laughs> what is this song this is <laughs> it takes like a minute and a half <laughs> and um <laughs> then. And I'd also just used my first song, but I lost to that song, so I'm not using that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was sort of always, I'm always listening to new stuff that comes through that, that I hear, and I was sort of oh, put that in notes, that listen to that later, see yeah. what I think. But this, um, yeah, it came on in the um, in the group chat, and um, I was like, oh, that's gnarly. <laughs> I wonder why has never on used this song. Yeah, it's got the best build up that there is. It's got yeah. The best ro- opening solo, yeah, and yeah. everyone knows it. So Every, yeah, yeah that's that's it. Right. Australian yeah. classic. It's it's a, it was a, it was a massive uh, massive crowd favorite, but al- also just uh, when people hear your name and and how does that feel like now that you've got a, a genuine following and people are excited when you when you walk into the stadium and and uh, you know in anticipation of seeing what you do in the cage is, is it, yeah. how 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 was that sitting with you now as you're starting to emerge? Yeah, a, it's like. Is it it's one of sim- Australia's stars in the cage? It means a lot because it's something that I hadn't even really thought about until um, the fight with D in a really small room at Golden Grove and it was a bit more intimate. 
Mm. And then I walk out and everyone's on their feet. And, um, yeah, it just was, it actually blew my mind. It said shiver down, shivers down my spine. And I was like, this is like, this is what I do this <laughs> for, for sure. Um, and I don't really understand it. Like I'm, I'm just, you know, ever, of anyone that it, that people could get around it, for it to be me just just, just blows my mind. Oh, yeah. mate, wait until it's 100,000 people at the MCG yelling your name. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, as long as I can put future. on <laughs> exciting fights for them, then... Yeah, absolutely. Happy. What, yeah, what, what style would you say that you've... Have you gone towards more of an all-round? It seems very like you, you can go anywhere and do anything mm. in, in terms of it's like you're not really super grapple heavy, you're not really super striking. Yeah. Like, is there something you've, you've, you're like, I'm going to put my focus on covering all aspects uh, or is there a certain thing that you feel like you, this is my real strong point? I think I've realised that there's some, like at our gym, there's a lot of guys that are really good at striking mm. and like as you get on and then you maybe train with someone else or you train or some guys come into your gym and you train with then you realise how, how many, you thought that, everything you know about striking is common knowledge mm. and then you don't and then you move with someone who's maybe had more fights than you or has been in around the sport for many many more years than you have and you're like um wow you don't even like why don't you move like yeah yeah um, like rich warner yeah <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think um Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I think but you should see him strike. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. <laughs> I don't think he does. <laughs> yeah, so I think um that sort of recently has well that's always my like that's where I'm most comfortable. I'm mm. comfortable everywhere, to be honest. Um and at each fight camp goes I'll like I'll fix any holes that I find that yeah, and I seem to, because I'm still so early on, I'm making strides every every like couple months that I'll look back and I'm like, whoa, I like never used to be able to defend off the cage like I can now, or I never used to be able to control someone against the cage, or just control the center of the cage like I do now. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think, but I think the biggest thing that separates me from um, maybe some of the other guys in the division or all divisions is that I've found what's what's works with my body and I'm exploiting the hell out of it right. you know um, and that's uh, that's also because I have a coach that has seen so many bodies and he, he's got a great mind for, for MMA mm. that he knows when I do something right he knows that he's seen it and he's like let's work on that and let's l nail that and yeah it really comes down to distance management mm -hmm. and um that's why I don't seem to get – well, that's why that last fight I got hit one time. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, it's just looking like you're in range, but knowing exactly where – there's a fine line and knowing exactly where it is Yeah, yeah, and being out of the way yeah. so you're ready to counter. Yeah. And, and with, with Sambo, it, it, when you look at an athlete like Joe who's uh, accumulated a, a skill set already, is there anything you've got to strip back or slow down um, as you're kind of preparing for a, a high-level competition? Or what, what, when you're working with MMA guys, what are some of the things that you're trying to kind of cultivate or, or maybe bad habits you're trying to slow down a little bit so that they can integrate better with uh, the Sambo skill set? I wouldn't say bad habits. I think it's more just dealing with the, the coat you've got on. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're not sort of shirtless or able to slip through. Someone's able to just grab your wrist. Yeah. And they've been working on, on grip strength their entire life. And <laughs> you can't get their arm off of your arm no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, and that's a big problem. Yeah. Especially when you're used to being able to maneuver and get out of positions. Yeah. Um, like, for me, it's the opposite. I, I'll regularly get a mate who does wrestling and is 20 kilos heavier than me yeah. to do no gi stuff with me. Yeah. And uh, that's just so that I don't ever forget... <laughs> that th this is a safety net. Me being able to grab them and push them away, it's always a safety net for me. So, so that's always yeah. uh, almost like a crutch for you that you can always go back to. Yeah. But so you've almost got to unteach yourself that, yeah, yeah for the uh, either the real world situation or for maybe MMA. Yeah. So I, I would probably say it's more the opposite. It's more you've got to give someone with an MMA uh, background sort of 
what can become a bad habit for them in MMA. Yeah. Um, that said, if they're on the street, someone's wearing a big old suit <laughs> jacket. or jumper or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you look at them wrong. as targets, yes. don't you? Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. Be, be warned if you're walking around just thinking you're being warm, <laughs> this guy's looking at you as yeah. a potential victim. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> just, uh, just letting you know. Shirtless uh, <laughs> lunatics are safe. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Should, be, should be right there, down at, down at Glenelg. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you should be fine. So, uh, so when um, <coughs> in in um, uh, as you're now looking to transition into MMA, what are the, some of the uh, things that you're now mindful of? Um, Joe mentioned striking and and that type of thing. And you mentioned that might be uh, uh, something that you'll need to work on to to fill out your skill set when it comes to MMA. Is there anything else that you've been kind of thinking? Oh, all right, I'm going to have to get do a bit of Muay Thai, or I'm going to have to. Do, oh yeah, yeah, definitely have to do something like Muay Thai. Um, and just being able to check distance and stuff like that because uh, I'm so used to, you know, my in combat some of my strategy is basically I'll die for them, I'll get a grip on them, they yep. can't get me away, and then I'm either wrestling them or I'm doing knees and, and sweep. You know, I've got like a very specific formula that will not work in MMA, like 100%. I can already see it yep. going terribly wrong <laughs> and, and going me on the ground. So uh, I'm slowly, well, and, and that's the problem because you're preparing for samba competition and you've got to use samba techniques and sample strategies yeah but then in the back of my head every time i do that well i go this is probably going to end up with me in a casket <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah bit by bit i'm trying to train up other people and like i said i'm looking forward to the move because that lets me um hopefully integrate and work with an, an yeah. major that's actually going to be able to prepare me um for that specifically it You'll seems be to, to be the home. trips that um, really <coughs> translates so well and understanding like the balance because you don't have a cage or a wall or anything it's less just a wrestling mat yeah. right but in wrestling they can get a you can get away from people still if they're too if you're in a disadvantaged position you can break off and get away with the jacket you can't get away mm. so um the best you can do is trip or throw or try and return with something and it seems to be that the guys that come from combat sambo or world champions like islam Makhachev and Khabib, mm. it's not like they're like, – sometimes they are shooting for takedowns, but it's mostly like when I watch Islam, it's just the guy's trips are just out of this Excellent world. Level, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it just makes it look so easy. And you know that, yeah. Who have you got tipped for this weekend? He's fighting against uh, Charles Oliveira. Oh, God. I've got a, I've got a multi that I'm not confident <laughs> about. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick TJ in that? Yep, yeah. So yeah. I've got TJ, I've got – um, Sugar Sean, I think he's. I've gone show with that him. as well. He's the I underdog. Think, I picked I him as gonna, well. He's, he's <coughs> Peter Yan. A huge he's fighting, underdog, yeah. and I think he's going to show everyone. I think so know. too. I agree with him. He's, <laughs> yeah, I'm all about Sugar Sean. He's. Uh, I think he's. Um, I think he's the man. He's, mm -hmm. His control of distance is yeah. why I've gone with yeah. Peter Yan being the shorter, even like shorter fighter. He's a great striker, but he needs to get in closer distance to be able to land those strikes. Whereas yeah. Sugar Sean is the. the Perfect antithesis to that. He just mm. he's rangy, he's long, and he'll he's fought strike. that style so yeah. many times. But also, like mentally, he seems like he's just on a rocket ship. Like he's wherever, however, like big of a superstar he'll get. I think he's like he's ready for it hundred percent, and he's like he's not gonna take it easy on someone. He's not gonna be um, timid against someone who's got a huge name mm. or is number one in the world. You know, yeah. Um, and then I've picked, so I'll explain this Trugan? first. didn't pick Trugan. No, no, no. I just did a, <laughs> I did a TJ, Sugar Sean, and then the main event, I um, picked Charlie Olives. God. Because. God against me. Because. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. The last three fights he's fought, he has ruined my multi because I thought <laughs> yeah. he was going to lose. Yeah. Same, <laughs> same really, yeah. And this, this weekend, I'm like, I'll... I'm going Islam, except. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I'll probably cash out. Maybe get a second one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just get, get two. Yeah, just yeah I think bases. that's how yeah. we'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Charles Oliveira is the, is the champion at the moment. And as you said, yeah, the last few fights he's had, he's been almost knocked out in the first round, like so close against every one of these opponents. And then second round, he just sort of hangs on and, and then gets yeah. a submission. And yeah. it's like, but he gets so hurt in that first round and it's like, oh, this is it. He's all, he's going to lose and then he'll, he'll make the comeback and he's done it over and over and it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think Makachev is uh, just going to control him. Uh, it's yeah. a great story if he wins too. Yeah. Like, um, 
Khabib steps down, there's a whole lot of shenanigans that go on with um, juggling the belt yep. while he's gone. And then in, then his... Um, Protégé or teammate. Yeah, or, or, yeah teammate yeah. that he's grown up with since childhood mm. um, comes back in Abu Dhabi um, and wins this... Ch- Wins the championship for the team again. Yeah, yeah. Those guys yeah, from, that, great from that Dagestan area that they these grappling style heavy like that they're, mm. they're the they're the future at the, at the moment. Like they're they're taking over. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen anyone that is like it. Always goes like that where someone's like so dominant at something, and mm-hmm. they're like everyone starts to copy that, and then they run into something that yeah. just counters it perfectly. Yeah. Might be Joe Brown. For <laughs> might, might be Joe Brown. Though there was a guy. Uh, I forget the fight, but Khabib had one fight where he just couldn't get the guy down. Cleason T-Bow? Yeah, no. and he just had enormous biceps, right? Right. And he just had him against the cage and he couldn't take him down and he was just lifting him up the whole time. So maybe mm. the counter to all these Dagestans is big biceps. <laughs> maybe. Hey, well, there we go. Well. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him on. Uh. So, uh, so tell us again, if people want to get involved in Sambo, uh, how can they do that? Where can they go? I'm sure there's a website you, I think you might have mentioned before. Is it the yep, South Australian, Australian Sambo Federation as well as my club? Vela Sambo Academy. Vela, that's V E L L L E S. V E L E S. V E L E S. Yeah. Vela. Velas. Velas. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So V E L E S. Um, Aca- uh, Sambo, Sambo Academy. Academy. Um, so people can go over to there and they can just kind of jump on. They'll see what's going on um, and they can pop in and train anytime. You'll take anybody. Yep, absolutely. Russian, you can just Ukrainian, rock up. Yeah. Cambodian, yes. yeah. whatever. We don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yep, you you're don't good. need a message. If you just rock up, uh, we'll look after you. And we also do our kids' classes on a Tuesday. Great. Um, so if your kid wants to get involved, <laughs> you yep. to smack people around in the schoolyard. Yeah. Um, yeah, more than welcome to come down. Um, absolutely. But yeah, it's a love, both clubs have a lovely a little group and... It's a really nice environment. Wonderful. And uh, anyone from other states, uh, you can still contact South Australian Sambo uh, Federation because um, Sava runs the Australian one. He can point you in the right direction for a club. Yep, yeah. beautiful. Um, so, yeah, wherever you might be listening, uh, right around the, the country and around the world, there's uh, sure to be a Sambo club not too far away. But if you happen to be in this part of the world, uh, you guys will be down at Glenelg uh, putting on a bit of a display and some training in the not-too-distant future as well. So yes, yeah, see yeah. a bunch of guys walking around in coats on the beach. You, yes, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. In our shirts or in yep. our jackets, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see them there. Yeah. And and Joe, you, you, you mentioned before uh, maybe Apex Three at the Nord Oval on the twenty fifth oh, of February looms as a definitely p- Apex Three, definitely yeah. Apex yeah. Three. That's I'll be on Apex for sure. You will be on. I Apex. will be on Apex. So everybody can just rush out buy the tickets now, understanding yep. that Joe, the Vanilla Gorilla Brown, will be at Apex Three. Yeah, not just signing autographs, but in the cage. <laughs> not just signing autographs and shaking babies. I will be in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, do you know who your opponent is yet, or any whispers no. or rumors? No, I've heard nothing. You've heard but, nothing. They um, tell you nothing. You don't care. You just turn up, so and whoever they put in there could be a it. sambo practitioner from uh, <laughs> from <laughs> Cambodia. Well, yeah. Apparently, we might be um, <laughs> doing our own little competition at Apex. Oh, okay, so cool. You guys yeah, are discussing it. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That'll be terrific. Yeah. So, so that'll keep me safe from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Fly. I have to go over yeah. here. Yeah. Otherwise. <laughs> 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 Excellent. So, uh, so fight fans looking forward to what you've got coming up next. Only have to wait until February, maybe before, if something yep, interesting if comes I, up in the meantime. Yep, I put a name out there, so yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a, people know that you're available between now and Christmas, That's and it. if the right opportunity yep. comes up to is there a see your sky car run? upcoming between before. Apex? Is Sorry? There, is there a DFC card before Apex? No, but there is a UFC going on in Perth, yeah. so maybe you'll see uh, Joe there. Yes. Yeah, so oh. just stay tuned. So everyone yeah. harass, announcements harass the UFC and Dana White on yeah, Twitter just, just and tag him into Instagram and say, get Joe Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Joe's not in it, we riot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. We really enjoyed it. Thank you very much to our guests, of course. So, uh, And we look forward to bringing you a whole lot more of the Daily Combat podcast very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you.